You're listening to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast, the show that proves no one stumbles upon success ever. With your host, Lou Need. Every Mondays and Thursdays, we deliver cold heart evidence behind the power of a robust morning routine. Get ready to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. I have been helping a lot of my friends take their business ideas and turn them into purposeful businesses. If you have a business idea and you want to get a business plan together, get a lean canvas together, or you simply want to know how to get a a presence online or social media presence, I am your girl. I now provide that service. You can find out more on our website, um, bestmorningroutineever.com. Go under the show up tab. Because the show up aspect is you showing up on purpose. It's showing up to live your purpose. And we talk about get up, dress up, and show up. You get up with the morning routine app. You get up with the morning routine podcast. You do more your morning routine. You dress up. We have a new product as well. The Smart Magic Eye Mirror. And that helps you with your calendar on there. Showing you how to be productive. How to be your best self as you get ready and groom in the morning. You see your traffic update. You see your your calendar view, you you see everything you need to prepare you for the day and even affirmations, those positive affirmations. We used to use sticky notes, but now it can be automatically uploaded into your magic mirror. And now the show up piece of it, starting your own business. You have this idea, you have this talent, but don't know how to get it to the world. I can provide you with the support you need to get clarity on that vision, but also to get you started with a business plan that can get you funding with a lean canvas to help you reach and talk to investors. So that is the um, the morning routine package. Okay, you can find out more at um, bestmorningroutineever.com. All right, let's get to the show. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Lou Lewis. And today I have the honor of introducing a very special guest to the show. Today we have Dr. Barbara Dale Petsen. Dr. Barbara has extensive personal and professional experience on the subject of self evolution, which is really, really crucial right now, and conscious leadership, and also well being. She has over 18 years of global experience as inspiring individuals, entrepreneurs, and leaders to connect with the most authentic, profound essence, discovering, as we love to say in the show, their purpose and bringing about positive change in their lives and in the world. So it's an honor to bring Dr. Barbara onto the show. Dr. Barbara, welcome. Thank you so much for the generous introduction, Dr. Leonid, and uh, it is an honor to be here. So thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. I'm again. I'm looking forward to diving into leadership and what it means and how we can go about finding our purpose. But I know you have over 18 years of experience in this field, so I'm curious. You know, tell us about your journey thus far up to this point. <laughs> Oh, so much to say. (laughs) I better just choose a little bit of it because it is such a beautiful and long journey at the same time. So uh, I am a coach and uh, I I help people to express their essence, express who they are. And first of all, remember who they are and reconnect with themselves. And the journey that took me to this profession, which I love deeply, has been literally my my life journey. Mm -hmm. And um, it has been my own discovery of myself and how I could uh, become a better person at very different level of depth. It has been passion for people and passion to help people really express themselves that invited me to this uh, Path. So I am originally from Italy and when I finished my university years, I decided to move to the other side of the world. I moved to Asia, to China, and uh, I spent several years actually of my life over there. And I had the opportunity to encounter many different people from different cultures, religious backgrounds, economic backgrounds. And uh, it has been fascinating to explore our diversity and get to know uh, these different cultures. And through my interaction with diversity, I found a way to discover more about myself and who I was. And um, 
I loved the journey. <laughs> I loved it. I decided that that was uh, a worthwhile journey to share with other people. And therefore, I decided to devote myself to help other people explore themselves mm -hmm. and their lives and make the best out of it. So this is what have motivated me in my journey. And that took me to where I am today, where I am now. That is fantastic. It's interesting how the self-discovery path always includes some type of traveling, right? Some type of getting connected with nature. Have you noticed that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love traveling. And one of the biggest challenge for me uh, that this current situation brought has been really not having the possibility to move and interact with different cultures, because this is what I've been doing for the past 18 years, literally interacting with diversity, with, with nature as well, mm -hmm. as you say, right? Because uh, when I was living in Hong Kong or in China, uh, in Australia, in Singapore, these are all places where I live lived in Asia Pacific, my interaction with nature was constant. I found I love hiking. And actually, I found that hiking in woods mm -hmm. was uh, a routine that I needed. And so I picked it up <laughs> as, an, as a hobby at first. And then it became really something I could not uh, do without because uh, being surrounded by beautiful trees, the scents that you could smell while walking, the peace and the sense of harmony that I was experiencing in my walks was amazing and was so much nourishing that became part of uh, who I am and part of my world. So absolutely, diversity of culture. And I did these, yeah. in, as I said, in, in Hong Kong, I did it in China, I did it in Australia, wherever I was and wherever I lived, uh, I always looked for a place where I could have my couple of hours a day of uh, walk. I would do this in the woods. Uh, and it is simply part of who I am today. That's that's phenomenal. Exciting to hear. The piece on, on diversity really hurt, hits home because I can understand that when you do travel, especially to um, internationally and other places that you've never been on, sometimes you don't even know the language. The yeah. beauty is those who wonder are not necessary lost. Yeah. They're not necessarily lost. Like you're finding your way, you're finding your path, you're learning a new language, you're learning a new culture. And that's what traveling gives. It's that um, perception. It gives you perception when you return back home. It, it gives you compassion and it helps connect to the rest of the world. So bravo to you. <laughs> you know, thank you very much, Lunid. But, you know, for me, it was also diversity has been the way for me to actually find myself. Because uh, I remember that in all, I, I actually lived in many different places. Uh, so when I was in interacting with people from different cultures, different backgrounds, different colors of skin, uh, different way of thinking, I remember that I interacting with them was challenging very often mm -hmm. the idea I had of myself, of uh, what I valued, of the culture I come from. And uh, it was very clear for me, there was a moment when I knew that I had to decide either to allow diversity to question myself and who I was and my values and what I just said, and uh, allow diversity to challenge me. Or I could uh, just shut down and just decide that who I was was enough and I did not need to interact or to be challenged by diversity. I chose the first option. I wanted to question myself and where I was coming from, what I believed in, what was my values. I loved for diverse kind of people and culture. I wanted them to challenge them. And uh, to give you an example, uh, if for the culture I come from, I'm Italian, so I come from a Christian culture and Catholic culture, just by default, the country is like this. Mm -hmm. And so if I would uh, interact with people that had no religions, for example, hmm, and they had a very different set of values, for them, it maybe kindness was not so important as a value, I'm just saying, right? And mm -hmm. so... 
I was open to question and I was open to ask myself, okay, this person is a, is an interesting person and this person doesn't value kindness the way I do. So what does it mean for me? Is it something that would work for me? What does it bring to believe in the way she or he does? And mm -hmm. so I was open to question myself about it. And after I questioned myself, I was free to decide, again, what was important for me, what I wanted to believe in, and what my values in this example, which one were important to me. And so I had a chance by interacting with diversity to redefine and re-choose what was important for me and who I was. And I think that that's a extremely valuable. It is really an element that we do not want to give up. So I believe that there is so much richness in interacting with diversity. And I, I wish for everybody to realize that that is the case. Whereas often we run away from what is different because exactly because it challenges us. And mm -hmm. sometimes we don't want to be challenged in who we are and our sense of identity. And uh, I think it, on the other side, we have a great opportunity to grow and become better and more aware of who we are exactly because we interact with diversity. Yeah, that, that is well put. And, and I want to unpack that a little more. Um, how can we get comfortable with being uncomfortable? Absolutely. Well, I think that the first, uh, if, if that's a question, is that a question? That is. Yeah, that is a, a question about diversity. When it comes to diversity, how can we pull ourselves out of our own way? Yeah. So we, we can experience this richness that you, you explore in yourself and that you were talking about that is possible when we are um, around diversity. I think the first, uh, what is absolutely important and made a difference for me is curiosity and uh, be open and suspend judgment. I think that these three are key elements if we want really to access that wealth that I was talking about that okay. interacting with diversity does. Curiosity, because you do not know what's in front of you. Assuming that you do not know, because we might have a lot of judgment and assumptions, and we want to just suspend the judgment, suspend our assumption, and just be curious, and curious in a positive way. So what is this person about? What can she bring to my life? What can I learn from this person? What can I learn from the experience that these divert people that are different from me are experiencing? So being curious about the other the person being open, knowing mm -hmm. that what we know is always a tiny little bit. Mm -hmm. It is not exhaustive of reality, right? So be curious, be open to learn more of what we do not know for sure, yeah. and uh, suspend any judgment that we all have, any assumption, anything that we think we know about the person or the culture or the environment we are in, and just really be open, curious, uh, and uh, ready to receive what is different. That worked for me. That works because then you're removing um, self-bias because a lot of the things we learned, it's confined. It's in the confinement of our family. It's in the confinement of our own culture. And it doesn't really go much outside of that. So that creates um, bias. Absolutely. Absolutely. And saying my way is better, my way of thinking is better, or my culture is better. And so if we can actually remove that sense of judgment, as I'm hearing you say, then it'll be easier to be receptive to yeah. other cultures, to other identities, other people, because it actually brings in a more colorful blend to life. Yeah. And experiencing these, being open, curious, and suspending judgment allows us uh, to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Back to, back to your question, because uh, we need to be alert. We just make an effort to be curious, to be open and to suspend a judgment. And, and we know that it is uh, something that we decide. And so even if we feel a little bit uncomfortable, because perhaps we are vulnerable, because when you come towards me with something that is different than I'm not used to, if I am open, I am questioning a little bit myself, or at least I am looking at myself in a different way. And this might make me feel uncomfortable. And yet, because I am curious and I want to just at first explore, 
right? Something that is different for me. It doesn't mean that I'm embracing it, but I am open to understand and to explore and to see what's different. I think that that really helps us to learn to be comfortable by being uncomfortable a little bit. Does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Now, I, um, I'd love to hear about unexpected gift. Um, and uh-huh. you, you tell us about your, your book a little bit. <laughs> Oh, my book. I am so happy that I decided to write it. It is my story. It is the story of my 15 years in the Asia Pacific. And it starts with the experience of my breakup from my husband. Uh, that was unexpected and it was the out of the blue moment when it happened that he delivered the news and uh, from that moment on the book speaks about my journey of uh, emerging anew after the unthinkable as the subtitles say and it is my journey of uh, rediscovering myself reconnecting with myself expanding who I am and, and rebuilding my life in a beautiful new way from from a new dimension with different paradigms uh, I would say an evolution of myself uh-huh. discovering resources and parts of me that I did not know were there updating old uh, way of thinking and feeling thanks to this difficult situation and it is basically a journey that goes through many many years and it is lived in different countries and thanks to diversity what we talked about diversity is the experience that is also in my book so it is really a beautiful journey of self-discovery and uh, renewal um, Mm. and falling in love with life more and more while discovering who you are. So I'm very, very happy. I wanted to write this book because when I was going through my adventure, that was a painful one. And of course, it it starts from a traumatic event. I could not find uh, a book that could speak to me from the future. And that could let me know that uh, I would be fine. Life would be good again. And uh, there is a future again. I couldn't, I couldn't find any support with that. And so I decided that I wanted to be that voice that speaks from the future. And so uh, now if there are people that go through the pain of divorce or breakup, or they have to overcome very difficult situations, I can tell them from the future that is going to be all right that there is a way. And that's what also moved me to write the book. Mm -hmm. The renewal of the mind. Tell us a little bit about that, because a lot of us get boggled down with um, negative thoughts, right? Negative beliefs that kind of tell us we're not enough. We don't deserve love. And so help us unravel a little bit the piece that one can go through to actually renew the mind, and renew those thoughts so that they are more empowering. Yes, yes, absolutely. And and that was a quite a journey because when you are going through pain, we tend and, and like in, in this case, when you lose something that you still loved, like it was my husband and my marriage, I didn't want to break up. Uh, my mind started to enter these loops where my mind wanted to find the reason why this happened and, and what can I do to make it right? What can I do to change the situation? And somehow I kept thinking the same thoughts. Mm. And I did not realize that actually the thoughts I was thinking, they were keeping me in a situation of pain until I consciously decided that I could do something about it that was not what I've done till that point. Mm -hmm. And so consciously I decided to, I decided, I said, okay, Barbara, you need to learn to think new thoughts. You need to learn to change the way you think. And what I did intentionally, intentionally, I would pick and choose some thoughts that were positive and they were empowering and that would uh, propel me forward instead of having me linger in the past. And so I began little by little to actually choose the thoughts that I wanted to think. And I intentionally choose to let go more and more the thoughts that by default would come Mm -hmm. to me, especially that they were moved by pain. It was not easy because uh, they go in automatic very often, right? Yeah. But when I decided that I wanted to become conscious of the thoughts that I would let in and that I would actually give life to, Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. it started to become possible to actually choose, literally Mm -hmm. choose what I wanted to think and what I wanted to believe versus that just let all kinds of thoughts in and just believe all that was going through my mind. So it became an experience of uh, awareness and consciousness uh, and become more and more clear about what I actually wanted my mind to think. Yeah, the ability to choose. That's very powerful to know that. Yes, that there is a possibility. We have the choice to pick our own thought because you're right, they are automatic because they've been ingrained as a child. They've been ingrained from trauma and they're negative and they're automatic and they are 60,000 of them a day. (laughs) You know, so being able to pick the few few of them to actually focus on can make the difference. And I and I imagine that's what happened for you. And I, I love that you, you you said it's conscious because um, a lot of the automatic thoughts, a lot of our habits are unconscious, right? They are subconscious. And so tell us about for you how that applies to the conscious leader, right? Because you do you speak very highly of um, conscious leadership as well. So how do we move from the unconscious way of being and thinking to being a conscious leader? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, absolutely. The first element that I would mention is the fact that a conscious leader is, first of all, a conscious leader of myself. <laughs> and so what I was saying, so I learn, I as a person learn to become aware of what are my thoughts about so that I can influence myself in a new way and can I can inspire myself in a new way. So I become a conscious leader of myself. This is the first step because, and it is also the most difficult one. And uh, once I have learned to become conscious of my thoughts and therefore I build a mindset that is empowering and it is aware of what's going on within me. Then I I look at my emotion and I become conscious of the emotions I live in. And those emotions I can also choose Mm. and I can start create and influence myself to be in a different dimension and a new dimension, which is empowering. And it is optimistic and see possibilities and generate possibilities. And it is creative. Once I've done that, then if I am in a position being in an organization or even in life to influence other and be a leader in the sense that I can be a role model for people and I can bring something to people and they follow because that's what's leadership about, right? So a conscious leader is a leader that knows about himself and it is also he or she is aware of the people they are mm-hmm. interacting with. Right. I am aware of what's uh, going on with you. I am emotionally intelligent. So I, I know how to relate with you, how to relate with you from uh, your perspective and not only mine. I can, I can sense you. I can see you and decisions that I made and the way I interact is a conscious of who you are and who the people that work with me are. And mm-hmm. also conscious about the environment and what's going around at the, bigger level at a greater level, right? So being the organization, being the community, being the world at large. So it is really being present, being aware of myself, know how to master myself and how to master my relationship with others by being aware and not blind to the others and to their situations. Yeah. As I'm listening to you speak, um, one thing that comes up for me is emotional intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? Being aware of not just your own self, your own emotions, but other people's as well around you. And traveling does gives you that leverage, that leg up quite easily. Yeah. And, and again, uh, we go back to diversity because I think that my years living in those cultures that were so different from the one I was uh, born in really helped me to develop my ability to tune in and to connect with people from very different backgrounds, as as I said before. And that was a stretching my emotional ability, my cognitive ability to the limit of my world. And so 
it did help me that experience to develop what is called the emotional intelligence. So the ability and intelligence of uh, connecting with others, learn to be with others and to relate with others while connecting with myself and the diversity of individuals at the same time. So I believe, especially today, that we need to be so agile and flexible and we need to really learn how to put ourselves in the other people's shoes because mm -hmm. that's the only way to actually connect in a world that it is so complex and so fast. So I think that really emotional intelligence today is one of the key, has always been for many years, but even more today, I would say in this situation, historical moment we're in, emotional intelligence is a key ability that we want to develop. Mm -hmm. um, one or some, how can we develop that conscious leadership? One or two things we can do. Well, as I was mentioning, to become conscious of who you are, of uh, what you stand for, what are your values, what is your identity and how can you expand your identity because it is limited. There are many versions of ourselves and uh, how can I update those versions, expand those versions of myself so that I can become more and more who I am, more authentically who I am. All these elements that allows me to know myself really know myself and who I can be and what, who I can become is the first step to become a conscious leader. Because then once I've done that work, which I also call the inner work of leadership, once I have done that work, I become free to interact with the people I am working with, the people I'm leading, the people I am collaborating with. I am free and at peace within myself and therefore I can better understand, better see, better perceive see better interact and connect with people that are outside so that is uh, i think the what i would start with if i wanted to become a conscious leader i would start with myself discovering myself who i am my identity and what i stand for really and authentically before being capable to connect and relate to other people at the highest level Mm -hmm. Well put. That is quite um, the path because it does help give you perspective, not just in yourself, but either your team as a leader and your business, right? Because the business is an extension of you. You have to set that culture. You, you yeah. have to set that on uh, that environment. And, and it, it's, it starts with you as the leader, because I, I know a lot of entrepreneurs who are, you know, consciously and actively you know, trying to find the best culture to retain um, people to stay in their business, but also to get the best clients in the door. Yeah, absolutely. So, thank you for sharing that. So I want to, um, want you to tell us, please, a little bit about what the process is for generative coaching. What does that mean? Generative coaching is a beautiful approach to coaching and helping people that believes that Every situation, every circumstances, every people, every individual, anything that happens becomes a resource that wants to support you, your evolution, your development, your growth, and uh, want to help you to achieve your goals. So I love generative coaching and I love to use uh, this method because it uses not just uh, our conscious mind, but it taps into our unconscious that, as we know, is uh, so much more powerful than our conscious mind. And so when uh, we speak about generative coaching, is a coaching that allows you to generate possibilities, opportunities, space, uh, and uh, uh, resources that we can tap into to achieve uh, our destination and our goals. So it is really a way that of doing coaching and experience that embrace everything that shows up. And I find that it is very powerful. It is always uh, uh, bringing some, something uh, important uh, to the session and to the people that are in the session and they are looking to create uh, something new for themselves and for their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and that the, the art, the process of, of coaching does kind of bring in a second eye, you know, when you're so consuming, it's your life. You think you got it all figured out, but when you bring somebody else in a third party in to, to actually tell you how they see it, 
and give you guidance. Yeah. It really does save you time, energy, and money <laughs> long, yes. in, the, in the long term. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And I'm sure you talk a lot about um, routines and, and the importance of routine mm-hmm. because you as a successful business owner and coach, you have some disciplines and routines yourself. So I want to dive into those absolutely. right now. So tell us, how do you get up, dress up and show up? What's your morning routine like? Well, as many people do today, um, meditation is uh, a key component. So every morning I have, uh, um, I start with the meditation, depending on where I live in the world, I have to say at the moment, I wake up very early. I love to wake up very early, meaning around 4.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so it is beautiful waking up and actually start with a meditation that allows me to be centered and aligned uh, from the very beginning of my morning. And then I add uh, this uh, morning walk that I was uh, talking about before so that I have my body (laughs) that is waking up fully with me. And then, of course, uh, having a very healthy uh, eating habits. These are key. And uh, these three components in the morning is what I've been doing for many, many years. And uh, it does help you to kickstart the day in an absolutely positive, strong and optimistic way. So it it sets the tone for the entire day. And uh, I cannot stress enough how powerful for me meditation and in combination with physical exercise for me is a morning walk in the woods Uh, for other people might be going to the gym or go swimming. Anyway, using the body is very powerful, is very powerful for me. And these are the the two things plus the healthy habits uh, in eating that are extremely powerful for me. Yeah, you said the strong, it's a strong way to start the morning and moving the body is a piece of it because you've been, you know, you've, you've been laying down for six to eight hours. And so it, it, there's movement. Once you start making moves, your body wakes up naturally. Um, I, I love that. that. That's a piece of your morning routine because even if it's a brisk, walk a brisk um, exercise routine, anything to get the, to get the heart rate elevated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's phenomenal because it gives you more energy throughout the day, surprisingly, because it helps you get... Absolutely. To- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some, at, at first, maybe for some people might not be, especially if you're not a morning person and so you like to sleep through a little bit, it might be difficult. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, pushing yourself a little bit and have a chance to do that morning routine walk, it is invaluable. So I find that it is worthwhile just to go against what you would do, which is stay in bed, maybe a little bit longer and just um, go for a walk instead. The reward is incredible and the effect you will have it throughout the day. Yeah, it, it really helps you get you grounded, but to get you physically, not just fit, but ready for the day. And that's that's one piece of the morning routine, right? It's no longer an external ritual or routine. It's more internal. How do you prepare the body? How do you prepare the mind? Not putting on makeup and wearing the best outfit. <laughs> that Because if yes. you take care of the internal, the outside will take care of itself. You'll look good, you'll feel good, and you present you, yourself well. You'll show up in life, right? That's the piece about showing up. How do we prepare our minds and our bodies? So the meditation is how we prepare the mind, right? So tell me about the meditation practice and the importance of it. Well, there are so many masters uh, and teachers of meditation that are amazing outside. And um, for me, it is the experience of meditation. I am a person that uses the mind a lot. I study, I love reading. I, reading is so nourishing. So I'm always using my mind also for the profession I do. And so like me, many people. And with the meditation... The effect of meditation has been for me to learn how to really calm my mind and quiet my mind and keep it grounded and not wandering around all places during the day. So through breathing and just following the breath, for example, I have learned in time, at the beginning it was not easy, but in time I've learned just to keep my mind centered and keep it uh, grounded, keep it calm. And uh, that gives a lot of harmony and coherence inside between my mind and my emotion and and that is powerful for me it it really sets the tone for my day 
Yeah. And then if we go back to those thoughts, those automatic thoughts that we had all day long, that's those are the things we are trying to. That's one way to get them grounded is through meditation. That's one yeah. way to kind of to make them more powerful is through meditation. It says observing them and letting go. As you said, that was part of your process early on in our chat yeah. is, is letting go of what is not serving you anymore those thoughts that are no longer making you strong making you powerful so that you can again i love that word you said choose the thoughts that you want to give life to absolutely absolutely and meditation does that beautifully so yeah um, dr barbara it's been an honor please tell us how can we connect with you how can we find you um thank you well, I am uh, quite active on uh, uh, LinkedIn. So just for, uh, with, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, follow just my name, Barbara Dalepetze. You will find me on LinkedIn and uh, also on my website, www.barbaradalepetze.com. Simply my name. <laughs> and uh, I'm always very happy to connect with people that are, and I'm curious to learn the stories that people embody. And uh, so please feel free to connect with me. And uh, if you are looking for a, a path for, of evolution, that's even, even better because that's what I love to discuss and talk about. So those are the ways LinkedIn and my website, I will say. There is also Facebook and Instagram, but I would prefer LinkedIn and my website. I'm more active there. That you've heard it here first, morning enthusiast. That has been Dr. Barbara, and she inspires entrepreneurs. Um, she inspired leaders and individuals to find their purpose and live in their purpose. And her book is all about that, giving you her personal story. So it's been an honor and a pleasure and to have you on the show, Dr. Barbara. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much, Dr. Lunid. It's been really a pleasure and a great honor for me too to be here. So thank you. Thank you. Well, all right, morning enthusiasts, that's it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. If you love the best morning routine ever podcast, we'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes or Google Play. While you're at it, tell a friend about the show. Be sure to visit bestmorningroutineever.com and our Facebook group to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic free bonus content. Until next time.